Now, as we continue with uh, the Apex programming, we saw that how to use list to Okay, so we saw how to use list to overcome the DML uh, governor limit. Like if we do an insert by adding multiple ob objects into a list and then insert one, it just sends one insert statement. So that's how we can uh, use a overcome governor limits. But then again, there is a challenge with governor limits. Like say for example, if you update a list of records and due to some validation, a few records in the list fail. The entire list of records will not get updated. So to overcome these things, there is a database class Salesforce gives us which allows transaction management. Basically, it helps in handling errors and specify records. Now you can go to the record level and check. In DML, if there are any log the records errors, in the DML, if there is one record which has some issues, all issues will get rolled back. Now you can use database class to analyze how many records have succeeded or failed, okay? If you want the DML, uh, if you want to use DML and exception handling or go for database class, you have to decide which one you want to use. You cannot use both. Either you use a database dot class uh, transaction management or exception handling okay so database class has certain methods that are not available in DML like your transaction control rollback you can empty the recycle bin um, that is hard delete the records and you can also have some uh, database dot query locator there are some other methods like that okay so how do we basically use a class is basically we will earlier we were saying database dot insert and update here we pass a list here and then it returns a result. In this database.save result, it will contain the list of success records as well as the error records. So those success records will have an ID, but those errors, uh, those records which failed will have a errors in that, okay? So let's look at this, how to use this. And also how to, what else you can do here is, you know, basically you can control the DML statement. You can use the database.insert to manage list update in case of some records failing due to validation rules, the others will go through. You can also do a set save point like similar to Oracle. You have a set save point and you can roll back the transaction. And when we look at batch apex uh, for large queries, you can use the database.query locator which is an optimized uh, method to uh, parse the queries, okay? So these are some of the methods that we have. Now let's look at more about the database. So you can create transaction control by creating a save point. So this any uh, transaction between the statement can be rolled back. All right. So these are some of the things with database. Let's look at the example. Similarly, as uh, we have seen database.update, if you pass false parameter in it, all records in the list will valid values go through, the faulty values will not. But if you just uh, do a database.update, it's like a normal update or insert, okay? So even if one record errors out, all the other records will fail. So uh, as I re as I am telling again, like DML transaction can either use exception handling or database class, not both. So let us see all of this in detail, okay? So now let's come back over here. And go to our or. Let's come back here and go to our or, or and see here. And now we have created accounts over here, right? So if we now create say four records, okay? And let's say we create four records and we just want X is zero and say we create around five records and say less than five. And we say as sniff, Let's say one thing, let's not give a X, which is a required field, okay? If the X is equal to equal to three, then what we will do is we'll skip the, we won't give any value in this. So it will return in a validation error. It's not in a validation error, whereas in the other cases, what will happen is we are giving a yes. So we're just creating five records and simulating a uh, error over here. 
also one more thing which i want to do is we need to clean up the as needs records which are already there so what i'm doing over here is i created a list i'm optimized list everything is fine i'll create a new account but if it is three what i'm doing is i'm generating an error uh, record like it this will not go through so let us see if all the five go through or don't okay and when we do a normal insert before that i want to delete the account list record so let's go back to the account list let's refresh this So how do we delete this record so before we proceed with this let me show you that so you know that i have told you that we have to now retrieve those records so acc list i'm going to retrieve the records and in one delete statement i'm going to remove all of them select id from account now what i can use is where name like this is pattern matching so this is going to fetch me all the records here in my list and i can do just introduce one parameter so it's called as sniff Say with the same pattern, so it's going to return me all the all these records which I got a as sniff in it. And once we do that, I'm going to delete the account list. So let's first clean up the data. So basically, we query for the data here, and we're going to remove clean up. So let's run that record. Then let's run the DML, and so that's run. So now let's then we re, let's it's taking some time. Now when we go back over here and see new this week, all those ASNIS records have got deleted. So uh, the Atel updated and Reliance is still there, but Reliance 100 is still there, but these have got deleted. Okay, so now we can start doing our stuff again. So let's remove the stay tuned. We need the list. So what we do is we create an account. Now we are going to increment it 5x5 run and create 5 records. Yes. Alright, so if it is 3, what we'll do is active C. So let's run this and see what's happening. So now it's created the record. So maybe the active is not after all the required field. So let's check it. What we'll do is if it is a, a let us introduce a bigger error here let's introduce that the name we don't give the name over here at all so it will surely fail so we don't give any name here So what I'm doing here is I'm introducing an error in the account. I'm not giving a name to this. Let's see now. So now it has given me an error that first exception required field missing. So this is this happens only in the case of on row three. So now let's see if the records got created. Okay, let's refresh this. Now if you see the records have not got created the reason for that is even if one record failed because when we don't give name when the uh, value of x is 3 the whole batch goes for a toss the whole list will fail even though you give only one insert statement. So these are the things you need to be aware even though you overcome gamma the limit. So now let's introduce the database class and now let's pass this time. So let's pass this value here and see what happens. Now this insert has been replaced by a database class. As I told you, now this database is allowing, if I make it false, then it's going to allow batch update even if there are faulty records. So let's see that. So what we have to do is we say database.insert and false. So now let's see if it got created. I'll come back over here. Now if you see those records have got created excepting for the 23rd record, 20, 21, 22, 24. So this is the thing about database.insert. 
it works similarly for the update so if you process a batch of uh, records in a list of records and you want to see that even if there are faulty records but you want the rest of thing to go through then you can use the database.insert another thing over here with this is we can also go to the record level to see what has gone wrong what is the record what is the error message so how do we do that is now we need to get this data back into a let me just uh, All right, so what we have to do is basically we res uh, return the value to a database save result and loop through it. So this will return a, this database.insert returns a result, okay. So that we can loop through. All right, so let us process this. So if you want to go deeper into this and see like, you know, what is there and I suppose you batch of 500 records are going in. And suppose there are some few records which are failing so we want to check out what is the result so let's look at this so first what happens is it returns the value of whatever has gone uh, through true and false returns a database save result which is an array now you loop through the array over here database of save result if it is a success you get the id otherwise it will show you what is the error okay it gives you within this uh, uh, result list save re you also have another get errors uh, uh, which of type database.error in that you can get the status code and the get message so let's look at all of this in detail if else let's check all our values are right so for all right so now what we are doing here is we are going to add the same thing and execute it here which field where we are getting an error so we are going to again introduce the same but in this time it's going to start with a prefix suffix of three so let's execute this let's look at there is some error here so for data reason So now when we look at this now the code is what it is doing is again the same thing like we create four records and that when it comes to the third record we are generating an error now it is going to show us the take the database that save result and loop through the success and show the wrong fields erroneous fields here so let's see all of this how this works let's execute highlighted still some issue here let's real shoot so let's try some real time resolution of this error let us see it is giving some particular error for loop So list false So when we now try to uh, run through the save result, we will see what the error message is in the debug log. So let's check out the debug log. So we should have got one error and the rest of all are success. So let's see what it says. So these are the successful records which is coming over here from this statement. And this is the error message which is getting logged for the record that is this uh, that's given a failure. So as you can see, Four of the records have gone through and one of the record has not gone through 
and it has given us a clear error message. So this is how you basically uh, use the database class uh, to debug stuff here. Now the other aspect of it is you can also use database dot save point. Like say suppose you take uh, create a save point and let's take this example. Let's say we create a database dot save point at the top here and we do the insert here but now we say let's say uh, database dot rollback the save point so let's see how it works so now we have created like say let's create records called as six okay so we're going to use the same way we're going to say insert uh, database dot insert We are going to use database.insert and we are going to do a database.rollback. Let us see all of this. So we are going to just select highlighted. We have created a save point and let's see if it created or no. So now let's head on to the application. Head to the application and there we have to see whether the account records have got created or no. Let's check it. Now let us, uh, those records didn't get created. So now let's remove the rollback and run it once and with the suffix of six and let us see what happens. Okay. Now if we head back to the application and see what's happening, see the records got created. So these are some uh, things that you can do with the database dot uh, class. Database dot class, there's a complete documentation in the developer guide. So database.insert with a list, then database.save result. So if you look at the intelligence here, it shows you, you can convert a lead, couple of things, lot of things here. You can also undelete a record. You can empty the SIP bin, all the records will get recovered, okay? So just uh, practice all of this session and uh, we'll proceed with the next topic, which is exception.